Wouldn't it be really, really great in these videos if I actually had a choice in the matter and everything? And if real life was like video games. I should go. So guys, what I thought would be pretty damn cool for this review would be if I uh, showed you a very old video from my previous channel where I attempted to do an, a review. Now understand, naturally, I am a reserved person. I stutter over myself, I stumble over myself, and that's okay because I feel that if you're going to be out there, be yourself. Don't try and be someone you're not, and everything. So, I hope you enjoy this footage, as it's very old, it's from three years ago, back when Mass Effect 3, the Collector's Edition, was pretty much released, or lack thereof in the UK, and I had to get it online, because the retailers hate us. And, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, anyway. And you can all laugh at my misery, and tell me how shit I used to be. But anyways, enjoy this. This is my Mass Effect 3 tr Trilogy unboxing. Because as of yesterday morning, I got this puppy. Which I'm very happy about because my local game shops didn't have it. Because of the EA issue. But anyway, let's press it. Mass Effect 1 Collector's Edition. Got this pre-owned at my local game station I told them to hold it for me and they did and I'm very fortunate to have it nice artwork of Saren on one side Shepard and his crew on the other let's open her up see the game here and the bonus content disc before anyone asks I have bring down the sky because I had the game of the year edition beforehand try to get this puppy the manual, they don't do this anymore, the Galactic Codex book, this is a fanfic writer's dream, gives them everything they need to know about all the races, Threshermores, Baron, Dark Energy, you know, all that fun stuff, there's that. And then there's this, which is a centerpiece of every collector's edition. It's the art book. Very beautiful art in here. Very beautiful concepts. The Citadel, Krogan, Solarians, more art. Very beautiful stuff. The Mass Effect 1 collector's edition wasn't as packed. There's later collector's editions. Put that back over. Leave that there. But it was a great starting point. Now moving on. Mass Effect 2. I had this... I had this beforehand. As standard. I have got all the DLC. I've got the service network pass. And later on I got that. the classified Cerberus network personnel only let's open her up <coughs> the exclusive Dark Horse comic that shows how Liara came into contact with Cerberus and Ferron in the standard art book collectors citadel omega all that fun stuff
I will be going for a marathon of a complete playthrough at some point. But let's get to the Coupe de Gras, the one that I was waiting for. The Mass Effect 3 N7 Collector's Edition. Just a bit when this came. Let's get that out of the box. Did you see right out of the box? The nice steel tin case. Shepherd on the back. Femme Shep on the other side. Let's open her up. Yes, one disc is missing. I'm playing it at the minute. I mean, the online pass stuff. The Xbox Live. By the way, I've used these codes, so trying to use them is pointless. If anybody caught that. Here comes extra shit. Start. Nice little postcard of the Normandy. Another exclusive Dark Horse comic book. Let's have a look at that for a minute. Because I'm pretty sure this is centered on Lee on Aria, if I remember. But either way, same applies. The art book. Nice pictures of all the crew here. That boy is very creepy. Cerberus, the Atlas, cannibals, those things, mini reapers, Earth, Earth again, you know the drill. Then there's that. The N7 fabric patch. Velcro, just in case any of you hipsters want to strap it to a bag and then rip it off. Although I don't know why you want to do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna get this sewn to my bag. No matter. But anyways, let's put this stuff away and wrap this up. Across all three games in this series, the choice of squad mates is amazing. Meek, what the fuck are you doing here? The characters in Mass Effect are what really makes this trilogy go. And they are all amazing. Well, not all of them are amazing. I mean, the squad mates from the first one, you could probably say that Caden and Ashley got in, well, they got on my nerves. I mean, there's somebody out there that could possibly like them and wanted to use them in their squad all the time, but not me, not personally. Mass Effect 2, meh, there wasn't really a squad mate that I didn't like. Um, there were ones that were useless in gameplay, but I'll get to that later. Mass Effect 3, there's characters that are absolutely annoying as hell, and you just can't help but want to punch them in the face. I think as a fan, maybe it's just a fault of mine when I'm playing Mass Effect. Whenever I have the option to romance Garrus or Liara, I probably go for it. Garrus because he's my he's my bro. He's like the bromance of Mass Effect 1, 2 and 3. Number one, you could only be a bro. And that pissed me off when I wanted to do Femship and I just wanted to romance Garrus. And it's just like... Come to me, Garrus. I want to have human Torian babies. Seriously, not being able to romance Garrus in Mass Effect 1 is enough to give you beard rage. <laughs> I 
But luckily in numbers two and three you can't actually romance Garrus and it's like Oh, all the things we couldn't do in the first game with this Torian bad boy. I may be having a fangirl moment. Um, this Torian bad boy who snipes people from a mile away or looking like a cocker fucking spaniel. And he's a fucking badass doing it. And then the romance scene is just basically underwhelming. And his version of making love is touching foreheads. Erdnot Rex, oh, the tank of the squad in Mass Effect 1 and briefly in Mass Effect 3. <sighs> Such a massive badass. Who's very, very, very sarcastic. And can put people down with his shotgun and everything. And he's not been matched. As much as I like Erdnot Grunt from 2. I don't think he matched up to Rex at all. Rex is like the patriarchal badass of Mass Effect. Whereas Grunt, you can turn around and say, is the baby. Like, practically your son, your child in Mass Effect 2. Because you're the one who's there when he's actually birthed out of his chamber. And that's the. It's a kind of a different relationship than you have with Rex. With Grunt, it's a parent-child, and with Rex, it's another bromance, just not on the level of Garrus. <sighs> Praise be unto his esteemed beauty. Seriously, I don't know why there was even an option just to leave him on the Citadel on Mass Effect 1 and not even recruit him. Then there's Liara, the romance option for both male and female Commander Shepherds. And also the object of affection of a lot of 13 year old players of Mass Effect on the internet and the deepest darkest reaches of Tumblr. Anyway, I'm assuming that's how a lot of people fell in love with aliens in the first place. Um, she's a very smart character. Um, Mass Effect 1, she's ditzy as anything. She's very highly intelligent. But... She is also like an airhead. Like, you have to protect her all the time. During the contents of the story, of course, during gameplay, she can handle herself pretty damn fucking well. Um, Mass Effect 2, her character takes a bit of a shift. She gets a bit more negative emotion injected into her. And she becomes like an offshoot of her mother, Matriarch Benezia from Mass Effect 1. And gets that sort of attitude, that edge. And it works for her character pretty well in Mass Effect 2. Of course, she calms down a little bit for Mass Effect 3. Ashley and Caden, as I said earlier, I'm not... Myself, I'm not a big fan of them. Um, I felt like they were the two throwaway military characters and one of them was going to die. Spoiler alert. Um, and it didn't seem like they had that much substance to them. I mean, towards the third game, Caden gets a lot of substance. You find out he's a beer and bacon loving Canadian. <laughs> Epic meal time reference, anybody? But he proves that during the third game, and he actually has a bit of personality. Whereas Ashley stays pretty much the same hardline military crackpot, basically. But they had to have human romance options there in case anybody complained. But that's my view on Ashley and Caden. I think I, I don't I don't like their characters. I think they're throwaway. Caden like won me a bit over for Mass Effect Three, but not much. But that's them. Oh, Tali Zora Vasnima, or Tali Zora Naraya. Oh, this is where the the mystery really grips you because nobody knows what she looks like apart from that little stock photo that they put in Mass Effect 3 spoiler alert again um, but apart from that the mystery is still there and you don't really see Tally's face and that adds to her character and as this sort of innocent childlike crew member who always constantly needs your help 
and she does it a lot better than Liara does in the first game. I'll, I will be honest, I mean, Liara is high on my list of favourite characters, but Tally is just that much higher, because, you know, she, um, she's just one of those characters, and her story gets really fleshed out in number two, and it culminates absolutely perfectly in number three, even though she stays on as one of your squad mates in number three, but I'll get to that later. Characters that a universe, the, the fan base as a whole don't like, mm, I could think of one, and that leads to everybody's favourite moment in the game. And then there's that part of the game, of all three games, that every player cannot resist. Matriarch, Benezia and Saren. Um, people like those characters. I mean, I'm only talking like they're villainous and we're meant to hate them over the course of the story. But people really like those characters, Saren especially. I mean, the Turians, the Turian race for the whole trilogy is really, really badass. And is a great foil to the human race. And you've got to play it to believe it. They are that awesome despite looking like Cocker Spaniels, some of them, in the face. Mass Effect 2's The Collectors. Now, I'm not that big a fan of bugs, I can't really tell you how many people I know that actually are, because I don't know if there's any, to be honest. But that's the point. They wanted to go with a creepy, ethereal type of character that you instantly hate, because they are coming after you, and they are fucking bugs. And they want to kill you. It's how you feel if you're an arachnophobic and you see a spider on the wall. You think they're coming to kill you. And in Mass Effect 2, the collectors pretty much are. But, as a race in the game, they are an amazing, like, grunt. Army of grunts. Because you learn over the course of the story, spoiler alert before you go on, if you don't want to hear this, click off now. The Collectors are the puppets of the Reapers, who are the main villains for the whole trilogy. And they're just being basically indoctrinated to the will of the Reapers. And as villains, as... As a race, I mean, some of my most frustrating moments over the entire trilogy have come from the different subsets of Collectors. Scions, um, Praetorians, um, yeah, and just those types of, those types of Collectors, I had a ball ache trying to get past and that led to some of my most frustrating moments from my first few playthroughs of Mass Effect 2. I mean, once it gets released on Xbox One, the whole trilogy remastered, I will get it and I will be able to play it without that many problems. But for the first few playthroughs, they were insane to try and get past. And of course, for all three games, and number three especially, the Reapers themselves. The mechanized giant shrimps of the galaxy. And they have death lasers and they are coming to kill you and raise your entire planet from existence. And they can also worm their way into your head and make you their willing slave for the rest of your life. And probably past your life. Their work in the background of 1, 2 and 3 was insane. And they weren't doing that much, apart from indoctrinating and taking over slowly. And as uh, for the upcoming Mass Effect 4, which isn't going to be called Mass Effect 4, quote Bioware on that, there is not going to be a villain in the Mass Effect universe that's ever going to be able to hold a candle to the Reapers and their influence. And... There is no doubt about that, at all.
As far as story goes, it's got to be seen to be believed, mainly. But I'd say the first Mass Effect had a better story than the other two, and Mass Effect 2 had a better ending than the other two. Of course, Mass Effect 3 gets neither of those distinctions, mainly for its slapdash ending. The first game in the series could be used as a standalone. I mean, it could have easily been a standalone game. It was never intended to be. It could have been if the sales were bad and everything, but the sales were off the charts for this little RPG game with an expansive universe, and there's always something to do within the game. It's like if you ever find yourself bored, there's always a side mission or a little quest on the Citadel to do. And it's worth, it's definitely worth checking out. I mean, the first one is definitely way more expansive. You could go absolutely anywhere on the Citadel, and you could travel there by foot, and there weren't that many loading screens. In fact, Mass Effect 1, what it has over the other two, is that it foregoes loading screens altogether and still gives you a little interlude in an elevator where your characters actually have ambient conversations. And it's through ambient conversations that you can pick up new side missions and everything. In number two, this is a bit like streamlined and it's a bit it's a bit sad, but you can still get to everything on foot. It's just loading screens now take precedence over elevator screens, which is a bit of a bummer, but hey it's not to everybody's taste to have an elevator scene halfway through the game when you're trying to get somewhere. Uh, number three it suffers from the same problem. Um, Number three suffered from a variety of problems. Now, I loved number three's story. I thought number three's story was varied. It had a bit of everything for everyone. And some of the plot holes were fixed by DLC, but I will get to that in the DLC section of this review. But there's another part we have to address before that. And then there's that ending that fans of the series don't ever want to mention. Fuck you, EA. The gameplay on Mass Effect 1 was awesome. You can't, you can't um, fault it. It had a few minor bugs and everything, and the targeting system was off, and sometimes, and sometimes the gun didn't function as well as they could. The shotguns in Mass Effect 1 didn't function very well. But I also found it's to do with the class you chose at the start of the game. If you haven't got the right class, chances are that gun's not going to work for you properly. But I felt the shotgun in any class wasn't a very good weapon. But the exploration is fantastic. The item collection is fantastic. It seems like Bioware ported it over from Knights of the Old Republic 2, which was a very good game in its own right. Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3 could be described as sort of a watered down Gears of War engine with obviously biotic powers and that's really a proper description of the gameplay in 2 and 3. It's watered down Gears of War as much as I am more a Mass Effect fan than a Gears of War fan. The DLC for Mass Effect 2 and 3 is what breaks everything completely out of the water. And Mass Effect 1 didn't really have DLC as such. Um, it had two packs, just two packs. And one of them was a training simulator for people who were trying to fast track their characters into leveling up to the level cap, which is level 60 at that time. And the other one was a sort of side mission which could easily be writ been written into the main game. And I'm serious, it could have easily been written into the main game. Mass Effect 2, um, the major DLC was Lair of the Shadow Broker. And that was amazing, it had a Skycar chase, Liara is always making jokes. Liara is actually a temporary squad mate for that mission. And you come up against a monstrous beast called the Yarg and have a climactic boss battle. Mass Effect 3 has a bunch of DLC. The main two I should mention at this point is the Citadel DLC 
and the extended cut. I'll leave the extended cut out for a bit. The Citadel DLC is amazing. It's amazing. It takes up a lot of memory, but it's for good reason. You should check it out. You should buy the game, buy the DLC, check it out. And if the Collector's Edition comes out on Xbox One as a trilogy, guaranteed it will come out with every DLC attached for no extra cost. And if you're on next gen, I suggest you play it. I suggest you love it. I suggest you caress it, like my channel. And, but let's get to the extended cut, shall we? The extended cut DLC was, in my view, last minute, last minute panicking by Bioware to cover up EA's fuck up that was the original Mass Effect 3 ending. Now, the Mass Effect 3 ending, originally, Bioware had a completely different game plan. And unfortunately, that storyline got leaked out onto the internet. Bioware wanted to continue with it. EA said, no, change it. And that's why we got what we got. Because somebody got overzealous, leaked it out on the internet, and was selfish. And the ending got changed, and then we all had to suffer for it. But EA managed to make good. I've never once said that EA is a game, is a game company incapable of making games. I say they're money hungry and will not give you your money's worth unless you buy the DLC. But anyway, I digress. Um, the extended cut was meant to fill in a lot of the plot holes in a last minute panic and to cap off some of the intricate stories in between, like your romance, your bromances, Garras. But and also to patch up what happened on the ending. And as far as the extended cut goes, it made the ending much, much better. And I'm hoping that's the ending that's included if they do a next-gen remaster. And that's all I've got to say about the DLC for all three games. Those are the main ones. I could go on about Arrival from Mass Effect 2, which bridges the gap, which is basically Mass Effect 2.5. But it's just a simple story, and it doesn't really lend anything. I mean, you can play Mass Effect 3 without having played Mass Effect Arrival. But it's, a, it's, it's up to you. I mean, you get a little bit extra out of it, but it's not really worth that much. Layer of the Shadow Broker, now you can understand why that's worth that much, because that story was meant to be played. For all it's punching reporters in the face, for all it's putting shotguns in people's faces and firing, for all the, the times you put your handgun in Conrad Werner's face, and don't lie, you did it because you hated him too. Mass Effect will always be remembered as an amazing trilogy. It just works so well together. And the first one, as I said, could, be, could have been a standalone, but I'm really glad they kept it up for a complete trilogy and capped off all the stories, and it has to be played to be believed. And I'm hoping that Mass Effect 4 lives up to it, even though it won't be called Mass Effect 4, because it's not a continuation of Shepard's story. All I will say is I hope it does the franchise justice. Because me, along with a lot of other people, love the franchise to death, and will defend it to the death. Maybe those of us who just love the franchise in general won't start up a friggin' movement to get the ending changed. But, you know, that's nothing to do with me. I also have nothing to do with, like, vague theories and blah blah blah. I just enjoy the series. And this series, I can easily give a 9 out of 10 for how amazing it was. And how much replay value there is in this game. So guys, this is the part where I leave on a nice note, although that renegade option though, that renegade option though, uh, pussy, you, you, you picked the paragon option, uh, you, 
Okay. I'm calm. I'll just punch a reporter later. So, this has been Deadbolt Dragons Reviews, and this has been the Mass Effect Review, and, uh, I should go. Anyway, you should just check out my stats are. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and everything, and if you could for a moment to check out my other videos on my channel, and if you haven't already, subscribe and keep it here for Deadbolt Dragons. Peace.